There are many options when it comes to cover crops and supporting plants growing in the field. On this Tobacco University video, we're going to go out and see how the CBG gurus do both their cover cropping method as well as their plant support. All right, so a lot of options out there, but let's take a look and see one example here, how a hemp grower in uh, southern New England handles this. So first off, who are these CBG gurus? Well, they are built around the belief of producing a premium quality craft hemp product. They have with the manufacture of stability, alignment, and alignment with nature. They use uh, wood chips uh, basically on the ground there to really help improve soil quality and structure. And they also implement many of the Korean natural farming methods as well in combination with modern science. Sean and Jacob have been great uh, to kind of work with and allow me into their field. I give you their contact information as well as their website to take a look at, which will also be in the description. In addition to kind of the uh, CBG groups, who they are, some things we're going to discuss in this particular video is going to be the cover crops. So while different areas can have different uh, cover crop, uh, ideal cover crops to utilize, this is a great resource there to give you um, many different options. We'll see a couple mentioned today, but this is a great resource also um, to take a look at there if you're interested in cover cropping uh, fields. And lastly, this plant support system that they utilize, they use trellis netting. They simply take trellis netting and mount it horizontally, kind of use a modified screen of green method with the key to basically make this system work is really the heavy duty metal stakes that they use on the ends and throughout the field to really give that some support there. So hopefully you find this information useful and interesting. And here we go out to the field. Okay, so what we see here is a very unique cover cropping system. Not only do we have um, mulch here, uh, wood chips essentially, to protect the ground from moisture loss and weeds, we also see integrated cover crops as well. Now we have a diversified group of cover crops. So we've got oats here, which, you know, we're getting into late July, early August, and, you know, they're kind of going by the wayside and they're being cut down uh, with a weed whacker. Also have daikon radishes, as we can see right here. And something else unique because kind of an interplanting, we're noticing sweet potatoes. Uh, they're nice low growing, they're not really competing. We can clearly see the cannabis plants growing up. And then we've got our nice cover crop here. That's giving our soil diversity. That's giving a great way to kind of get something established, give something back to the soil, and then very easy to manage from the grower standpoint. So both of those features make it really nice to have this kind of system working together. So here we see the row has uh, just been weed whacked and we can kind of see that wood chip mulch there at the ground. You can also see what an easy knockdown it is for those selected cover crops. Now here's a daikon radish, a little late here in the summer, but we can see one actively growing right there. You can also see remnants of past um, crops as well, daikon radishes as well as some old potatoes. All of this is giving this area diversity and we're not really tilling the soil here in this example. So that's giving everything kind of set in place. Those oats will go down really nice, uh, obliterate really well. And you can see we're left with this nice walking path. It's also going to suppress soil splash. We can see drip irrigation uh, if, if needed. And we also see the netting here. And that's allowing us to kind of have this support for the plants. Metal stakes are strongly advised because they are so strong against the winds and doing a couple layer system as we see with some of the mother plants uh, allows us to kind of hold those plants in place hold those uh, in their respective areas and then not worry about it now if we do get a wind event when the plants are uh, below this netting well they're usually too small to be too harmed by it this is only about two and a half feet up um, so once they get to that and start working their way through that's when they need this, the support and that's when they will get it with the first layer of the screening. Now, if it's good enough to do once, it's good enough to do many times. You can see that nice replication here of the rows of this nice screening, nice trellis netting. It's pretty taut, so that's going to hold it very level. It's going to allow us to allow those plants to grow up it. You can see here, second tier ready to go. Plants just coming through that first tier. This is a great way to be very efficient with your time and really to focus on one row. Now, to help the growers, 
Also planting the same variety in each can allow you to manage those well within each row. And different rows, different varieties, different slight, um, different care that they may need, but keeping the same variety in the row, or at least most of the row, will really help you go through and be able to be efficient with what you're setting up. Metal stakes, again, very much uh, advised. We have taller plants, shorter plants, older plants, uh, seeing a nice little mix, keeping good records so we know kind of what works, and then hopefully repeat what works next year on a larger scale. Now here we're able to see our mother plants and we're seeing our three-tier system of the screen. You have space pretty evenly to give those plants support. We also have metal stakes here um, to really provide the entire structure support because it is on the end here in case there's a wind event. See those plants grow right up through it very well. We've got a couple just starting to poke through the second layer. But we already have the third layer in place. The reason why you want that third layer in place is you don't want to have to be worrying about it. Set it all up once. If you know the plants are going to get big, set it all up at the same time. Then you don't have to worry about it and you can spend more time training those plants up through it.